Pricewaterhouse Cooper is a partner of this forum. They know that the Russian education system is going through huge changes, including demographic changes. Uh, the generation that was born in 1999-98 uh, is, uh, in terms of quantity, half of the population which was born a generation earlier. And so we have fewer students, uh, fewer uh, but uh, the places uh, uh, stay the same, the number of places at universities. So they're beginning to think whether to go out and offer education to foreign students. However, uh, so far we only have 100,000 students from abroad studying at Russian universities. About 40,000 are from uh, uh, the countries of the former Soviet Union, which uh, is nothing compared to other countries where we, uh, compared to the US, for example, where they have 700,000 students uh, from other countries, uh, uh, similarly in Britain. And so we need to think whether we should try and make a push to make Russian universities more attractive to foreign students, and if yes, how to do it. I will try uh, to save time and will not spend a huge amount of time on presenting our speakers. You have their names and biographies in your programs. So uh, just a few words on how I suggest we work uh, in this session. We will have first uh, five rectors and deans of the leading Russian universities uh, speaking to you first. And uh, um, Mr. Livanov, uh, uh, Mr. Mao will, be, uh, will join us a little later because he's speaking somewhere else, but I'll ask um, um, Mr. Kuzminov to speak first. He's a rector of Storage University of uh, Higher School of Economics within the university. So please, Mr. Kuzminov, uh, uh, Yaroslav, uh, you have uh, five minutes only so that the audience uh, have time left to ask you questions. Um, dear colleagues, um, Look, in this agenda to be the first in this agenda is very difficult because if you are number three, for instance, you can react to something that's already been said. Uh, so uh, be, being the first speaker, I'd, I'd like to tackle the first and uh, I think the most important item, how to, be, to become competitive. And so again, mentioned the last 20 years and how difficult it, it was and the problem we've gone through and the demographic one, uh, demographic problem in particular. This is a, uh, I could uh, call it a, uh, a plague or a, a major problem, certainly, but we have other problems too. Uh, and I think uh, each uh, say decade or each five-year period brings us much closer and much deeper into the global economy. And of course we need to make education relevant. For instance, uh, if we look at lawyers in the global markets, uh, m many um, are edu educated um, in other universities, uh, in foreign universities who work here. It's the, uh, the same with other areas. And uh, if we take the WTO membership, uh, there's even more threat uh, to the Russian educational system. How, we, how do we tackle these problems? A few answers, perhaps. And the first would be selection of students, of undergraduates. Uh, this is something that people don't think of when they start uh, trying to find solutions for educational problems. I go to China uh, very often, and I see how highly motivated Chinese students are. And when I come back and look at our students, they are much too relaxed. Uh, we uh, have 15 
percent in China of the eligible students, uh, eligible young people entering universities. It's 60 percent in uh, Russia, which which is wonderful, but uh, only five percent uh, of new entrants, uh, for instance, want to study mathematics. Uh, and similar disciplines. This, this is a, pr a problem for all uh, major countries, developed countries, uh, but they import brains. We have not done it up to now. I think one of the solutions to our problems is to attract good brains from uh, the countries, uh, the neighboring countries first. Uh, to study here in uh, Russian language programs, but of course, and uh, other programs too. Uh, we cannot um, turn down the, the 60 percent, uh, but we must support those uh, universities uh, who teach the 15 percent of the best uh, brains of the best students uh, of our undergraduates. We, we need to support them and we need to make an effort to do that, to focus on that. Uh, secondly, uh, up to a third of any university's budget uh, is research, goes to research. Uh, about half of this research is money that is spent on fundamental scientists, not money spent on short-term contracts or uh, commissions. Uh, this sort of funding is available only uh, to five or seven uh, universities in Russia, and even the Moscow State University doesn't have uh, sufficient funding for fundamental scientists. And until we uh, decide uh, how to do it uh, and actually develop mechanisms to ensure that such funding exists, we will not solve the uh, competitiveness problem. And uh, Andrei Fursenko, who is sitting here, knows that the 90 uh, billion that is spent to support universities are the billions of rubles uh, which will be uh, spent on scientific research rather than educational uh, needs, but uh, again on short-term contracts rather than uh, fundamental sciences. Yeah. Thirdly, uh, contracts with uh, academic staff, academic teaching staff. Uh, the, uh, the the funding that is spent and their salaries are extremely low. Uh, and how to get their pay to even an average level? Uh, knowing that uh, at least 16 percent of the teachers uh, at universities are involved in research um, w would be impossible. So I, I think the solution is to develop a model contract and pay uh, those teachers and professors who are involved in resource in research on the on that basis. So our task uh, to help the universities to develop a model contract. And uh, fourthly, environment. We have a very uncompetitive social environment. When we talk about education, we forget that uh, this is five or six years out of any person's life. And when uh, parents send their children to universities, they look at uh, not just uh, uh, the course and what they're going to study, they look at campuses, they look at uh, uh, sports facilities, but of course uh, housing. They look at uh, where student, where their children are going to live. So we need to improve the social and uh, living environment of universities that are, uh, of students at our universities. Thank you very much, Yaroslav. Thank you for being brief. Uh,